Can you guys see the slides? Yep. All right. All right, so hello, Ella, everybody else. Uh, I'm Sergeant Lopez. It's my daughter. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm Sergeant Lopez with the Health Professions team out of Dayton, Ohio. Um, my job is not to try to sell you on anything, it's more to inform, right? So today, um, this presentation consists of what the HPSP is, um, what the residency training consists of, the, what the advantages of being a physician in the Air Force is, what the commitment looks like, and what the qualifications are. So, the HPSP is a scholarship program that is designed to alleviate all the financial burden um, from medical school students. It allows you to focus specifically on being a medical school student without having to stress about um, any income or you know racking up uh, student loans or student loan debt. So it allows you to just focus on yourself and your learning. Um, the scholarship. You know, it, it helps pay for your medical school in full, regardless of what your what school you're going to. Um, as long as the Air Force Institute of Technology, which handles the funding for the scholarships, they'll receive a bill from your school, and it's usually itemized um, bill. It'll show them you know what exactly you're paying for, and that typically will get covered as long as it's something that the finance office is, is providing. Um, it also includes a $2,500 uh, monthly stipend, uh, which adds up to about $30,000 annually. And then you're also looking at a $20,000 sign-on bonus for a, four, a full four-year scholarship. Um, if for whatever reason you guys don't do the first year with the HPSP program, um, you're still allowed to get that $20,000 signing bonus, but you would have to uh, add an extra year of service to meet that four-year requirement for, for that bonus. Um, so typically on average, um, with the scholarship, you're looking at about $130,000 uh, with no debt if you do the HPSB scholarship. And then if you do a three-year, you're looking at about 100 grand um, in your pocket. Hold on a minute. And then, for residency training, we have pretty much just about every residency you can think of. Um, whenever you apply, you apply through both the Air Force residency programs and the civilian residency programs. Um, this says there's 10 residencies for programs throughout the country, but there's definitely more. Um, and the Air Force looks for, you know, board certified physicians. Um, so that's, that's what we are matching you to is some uh, residency that's going to get you accredited and going to give you get you board certified. These are just a couple locations. There are definitely a lot more than this, um, but just to give you a general idea, um, some of the locations are Travis Air Force Base out in California. It includes a pretty broad range of uh, residencies, just because it is one of the biggest uh, Air Force bases or Air Force medical facilities on the West Coast. You also have Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska, Scott Air Force Base in Illinois, Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland, um, Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi, Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, which is another one of the major medical facilities um, that include a few residencies and other forms of training. Um, Brooks City based in Texas, um, San Antonio, Texas is another one of the major medical facilities that the Air Force has. Um, so it offers a broad, broad range of residency specialties as well. Um, so one of the, some of the advantages to being an Air Force physician is you get free continuing medical education. So typically as a physician, you're required to maintain your, or not just maintain, but um, continue to expand on your medical knowledge. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of hospitals have you do that through different CME courses. Uh, which sometimes you have to pay for, but for the Air Force, we cover all expenses for those courses, what, whether it be either just the course itself or the course and actually pay for your trip to that course. Um, you also have no uh, overhead costs. So as a 
Air Force position, you're not worrying about leases or payroll. Um, all that's handled by the Medical Service Corps, um, which are our, our hospital administrators. You don't have to worry about hiring or training people because you know the Air Force has their own program for that. And you don't have to worry about um, buying or, or maintaining equipment because the Air Force has fully established medical facilities for you to practice in. One of the big things um, we hear from physicians is that the no malpractice insurance is a pretty big deal. Um, not necessarily the cost, but just the not having to deal with some patients that typically might want to, you know, just complain and, you know, sue a physician for something minor. And nine times out of 10, it's not, it's not, it doesn't turn out to be anything and it gets dropped. Um, however, it, it still takes away time from that physician having to deal with, with those situations. Um, you don't have to worry about HMOs or insurance companies. Uh, when you put together a treatment plan for your, your patients, uh, that's, that's what's going to happen because all your patients are going to have medical insurance. Um, you're going to have all resources available. Um, if you, if you recommend your patient get x-rays, MRIs, or whatever it may be, you don't have to worry about, you know, if your MRI machine is down or if, you know, your patient's able to afford it or, or if your insur or if their insurance is going to authorize you to, you know, put that in their plan. Um, you also have a matching 401k pen, uh, plan plus a pension um, within the Air Force if you decide you want to do a 20-year um, service. Um, however, due to our recent um, ch uh, change in retirement plan, um, you don't necessarily have to do a 20-year service to um, take advantage of that um, 401k plan. Essentially, you're putting into that 401k plan. If you decide you only want to do a few years and get out, whatever you put into it, you take with you out of the Air Force. Previously, that wasn't the case. Um, there's a wide variety of different types of medical facilities that the Air Force has, whether it be a small clinic. Um, when I was at Andrew, uh, Anderson Air Force Base in Guam, that was considered a small clinic. Uh, it was pretty much your typical just doctor's office and and um, not really specialized. Um, but here, like where I'm at now in Ohio, it's a full medical uh, medical center and they have, you know, surgery centers, they have emergency room, they have an ICU, they have uh, plastic surgery, uh, eye, um, what's it called? Oh, ophthalmology, um, that pretty much anything you can think of they have here. Uh, there's also different uh, types of leadership advancement opportunities within the Air Force. Uh, you have the opportunity to, in the future, you know, be part of or be a department chair, uh, be a hospital commander, take on some leadership opportunities, be a residency program director. And you also have the opportunity to kind of branch out. So you'll have the opportunity to be an um, uh, instructor or a professor um, in a residency. You, you can do research and development for the Air Force. The Air Force is one of the leading research, medical research teams in the, Air, in, sorry, in the U.S. And you also have the opportunity to kind of step away and go do like humanitarian stuff if you would like and still retain all your positions within the Air Force as a physician uh, without having to worry about, you know, if I go do this for a little bit and I come back, you know, is my position still going to be there? You're under contract, so yes, you, you will still have that, that, that position there. So humanitarian relief effort is, you know, a really big deal for us. Um, I would say that's a big portion of what we do. Um, whether it be, you know, uh, helping local communities with like COVID uh, recently, um, going out to different countries and, you know, helping out with disease outbreak or, you know, just, um, what's it called, like, uh, pretty much just like basic care for uh, countries that can't afford it or don't have that readily, readily available. Um, even like with the refugees that we had coming in from Afghanistan, we had physicians, you know, checking them out, making sure they're okay, um, checking for disease. And, and if they do have disease, you know, quarantining them, 
just making sure you know everybody's healthy and um, any of their medical care or medical attention that they need you know is being taken care of. So a lot of, a lot of times a lot the commitment is you know one of the things that concerns people or something that they have a question about. Um, so it's a year for year um, after residency training uh, with a minimum of three years. So we haven't had the two-year scholarship recently, uh, last couple of years, but if for a reason I came back and you decided you only wanted to, wanted to do a two-year scholarship, um, you would be required to do a three-year uh, kind of payback. Um, but typically, we typically have three and four-year um, scholarships. Uh, if you do a three year, you know, it's just a three year commitment. If you do a four years and it's a four year commitment. And then that, like I said earlier, we need board certified positions, right? We don't have any general general practice positions. Um, so your time that you are paying back does not begin until after you complete um, your residency and you are board certified. So once you go, once you finish medical school and you go into a residency, that's when your time and service starts. Um, big picture, not so much time you're paying back, but that's what starts counting towards your retirement and your promotion and pay. So some of the qualifications, you must be a US citizen, undergrad degree must be at least a 3.2 GPA, good moral character, no drugs, uh, no major drug usage or uh, major uh, law violations, no major health problems. One, some of the big things are like asthma, anxiety, depression, um, pretty much anything that requires a you know day to day medicine. Um, typically, while you, when you are joining the Air Force, you you aren't allowed to be on on medication other than like birth control or like vitamins and stuff like that. Um, minimum cutoff score for the MCAT is a five hundred with uh, one twenty four subsections. So there should be an asterisk to this or asterisk to this because they will entertain waivers on a case by case basis. Um, more often than not, as long as you know it's still com somewhat competitive, um, I'd say about 490, 495. Um, a lot of times they will approve a waiver um, as long as the program it hasn't closed out or or um, they fill up the slots. So matrix applicants are automatic select. So what makes a matrix applicant is you need to have at least a 504 uh, MCAT score and a 3.4 GPA with minimum of 124 subsection scores. So what automatic select means that as soon as you get a letter of acceptance and um, you we get you like you, we get you started and get you medically qualified, as soon as we submit your letter of acceptance and your college transcripts, you're automatically selected. Um, you no longer have to gather letters of recommendation, um, fill out a medical uh, applicant questionnaire, pretty much explain why you deserve, you know, a scholarship. It's, it's you straight up give us the documents, we submit them, they get verified, and then you're good to go. Um, pretty, pretty easy and straightforward. So there's my contact information. If you guys have any more questions and would like to set up a one-on-one, -on -one, um, I know sometimes, you know, a public forum isn't, the most comfortable place for people to ask questions. Uh, you are more than welcome to reach out to me and you know ask those questions. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, Sergeant Lopez. Does anyone in the call have any questions at the moment? Otherwise, um, I will definitely make sure to um, post the slides and this presentation um, so you'll be able to access it later. Um, anyone has questions? Sorry for my daughter kind of coming in. <laughs> Absolutely no worries. <laughs> all right, well, then that is all we've got. Um, I really appreciate you coming to talk to us. It's a very helpful. Um, hopefully some people will kind of take a look at um, the slides and stuff when we send those. Um, maybe reach out to you if they have any questions. Uh, do you have anything else for us? Um, not really. No. All right, well. Thank you very much. Anyone that is here, I'm going to be sending a link so you can get your attendance points. Um, so stick around. Otherwise, thank you so much for presenting. Have a great one. All right. Thank you. You too.
All right, so the attendance link is now in the chat. Let me know if there's any issues with that, but that should work fine. 